It's now that Monday. Krista, missing. She didn't show up to work again. Oh, okay. Weird. Day goes by. It's Tuesday. Chris doesn't show up for work again. Something's wrong. Daniel knows something's wrong. So Daniel is being the great friend, co-worker that he is. is just extremely concerned. And I mean, from the beginning, none of this made any sense to him. And he still hadn't heard anything back from her. So by Wednesday, he contacts Chandler and tells him, look, we need to file a missing persons report for both of your parents. Because like, this is weird. It's out of character. Like, this doesn't make sense. So Chandler actually agrees and follows through with filing the report. Now this alone, I was very surprised because I was like, I, w- I would think that Chandler would just make a fake email account and like try and delay Daniel, you know, but he didn't. Finally, maybe he's realizing that leaving paper trails of his lies maybe isn't the best move. I mean, that's actually foreshadowing. He definitely does not learn any lessons, whatever. So Chandler went to speak with detectives about the last time that he had seen his parents, Bart and Krista. So in this new version of events, Chandler explained that he actually saw his parents get picked up by a couple that he didn't know. He's like, they came up, they picked them up, and that was it. All four of them supposedly went to the cabin for the holiday weekend. This would explain why both Krista and Bart's cars are still at the house because these two people picked him up and the four of them went to the cabin. Messy, messy, messy. He's not, he's just, if you haven't caught on, this guy's an idiot. It's like the next day, it's Thursday, July 8th. Chandler's older brother, Mitchell, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. You know, he's just believing that the family, that mom and dad had gone to the cabin. So they hadn't come back and Mitchell's like, dude, I'm gonna go drive up to the cabin and see if our parents are there and like see what's going on. So he goes himself. Mitchell also knew nothing about this trip that the parents were taking over the weekend. So, you know, he just wanted to get to the bottom of where in the world his parents could be. The police actually meet Mitchell at the cabin and all of them quickly agree that by the looks of things, like no one had been at the cabin recently. And of course, like there were no signs of Bert and Krista. Chandler was going through his neighborhood, like knocking door to door on all of his neighbor's doors. And he was asking his neighbors whether they had seen or heard anything from his parents, you know, like they're missing and have you seen them? Have you heard from them? Now there's actually like a bunch of footage of Chandler doing this, you know, going from door to door. It's from all the neighbors like ring doorbells and it's extremely creepy in retrospect. And even though Chandler was participating in the search for his parents, police, you know, they were already like starting to suspect his involvement in their disappearance. I mean, the story that he told them wasn't adding up to anyone. And also nobody was believing that he had actually talked to them over the weekend, you know, having that phone conversation, confirming that they were at the cabin and would be home soon. It didn't make sense. And the story of like some mystery couple arriving and like leaving with his parents also made no sense. They were so close. They all knew each other. Like he would know who picked them up because the family communicated, okay? Also, when police go and like ask the neighbors, there's no evidence of anyone seeing anything like this. No one saw the parents, no one saw the cars, nobody saw anything. Chandler didn't seem to like build a credible lie for his parents' disappearance. And any scrutiny and the whole thing would just completely fall apart. And honestly, it was starting to, yeah. It was starting to fall all apart because this time it wasn't his dad doing any of the digging. It was now the police. So Chandler was pulled into a police interview on July 8th. And this time he came ready with another new story. This one was about his parents rushing off to the cabin to handle a plumbing emergency that was happening there. Oh yeah plumbing emergency. But the police were like, oh, that's weird because we had just been to the cabin and there was no evidence of there being any kind of plumbing emergency. So they know like, okay, something's up with this kid, right? So they turned up the heat a little bit and their interview was now turning into an interrogation. I can't tell you what we know, but we know you're not telling us the truth. We know your parents are no longer with us. 
Okay, and we know the reason why. You need to tell the truth about what happened and just tell us why it happened. So Chandler, he actually, surprisingly, asked for a lawyer. I know, I was like, wow, that's rare. So can we do that? Okay, they're okay. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Lawyer, I'm sorry. Say it again, Chandler. Lawyer. But he asked for a lawyer and that ended that conversation. But luckily the police could arrest him at that time. And it wasn't for murder, no, not, I mean, not yet. I mean, they were still gathering evidence. So instead he was placed under arrest for providing false information about a missing person, illegal. Oh yes, I mean, good, because like, who knows what this kid's gonna do. I don't know how to contour my nose. I don't know why I try. So at the same time that police are interviewing Chandler, <laughs> my smile, a huge break in the case was unfolding. So there was a farmer, no, I'm sorry, a farm owner who reported to the police that she had actually seen Chandler on her property just a few days before her parents were reported missing. Oh yeah. She had spotted him leaving the wood line and noted that he was acting strange and it was just strange in general. Police, they go and search the area and like she shows in this certain area that he was at, she points it out to them and they go and they search this area and it would not take them long. It was like very quickly, they discovered a male torso, just the torso. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On July 10th, the remains were identified and it turns out the torso belonged to Bart Halderson. Ugh. So Chandler was charged with both the murder as well as the dismembering and hiding of Bart's body. But in their search, police had not yet discovered the remains of Krista Halderson. Now at this time, she was still considered missing. So the police had hoped that like, maybe she's still alive. So this is where Chandler's girlfriend, Catherine, comes into play. So apparently Catherine was aware that Chandler in the past had like cheated on previous girlfriends. I guess he had like told her this. And because of this, she was always a little, you know, she had her eye, she was looking out for him. Okay. Mm. So they had agreed that like to share locations or whatever on Snapchat specifically. So she would often go onto Snapchat and check on his location, see where he was. Oh yeah. She actually had his location available on Snapchat on July 3rd. And when she's like going to look to see what he was doing that day, she noticed that Chandler was near the Wisconsin River. Ris Wisconsin River. Ooh. Wisconsin River, there we go. Now, hmm, odd, weird, she thought, hmm. He never communicated to her that like he would be by the Wisconsin River, like what's he doing? So she thought it was so weird that she ended up taking a screenshot of his location, you know, to bring it up to him later. Like, what was this about? What were you doing? Who were you with? What's her name? But you know what? Okay, so she ends up going to police and she hands over the screenshot she took of Chandler on Snapchat, right? Thinking that it would be maybe helpful in some kind of way. And boy, was she right. It was very helpful. 